We back. We back. Boxing Clinic and more. It's your boy CJ Goodfella. Told you guys I had a special video today. I decided to do the breakdown prediction for Deontay the Bronze, Bomber, Wilder, and Luis Ortiz for next Saturday, March 3rd. I, I decided to do it almost a week early. A lot of people keep asking me about a breakdown prediction for this video. I mean, for this fight. And I'm going to deliver it today, Wednesday. I told you I had something special for y'all. And this is a fight that I'm going to say this right now. Disclaimer for all the Deontay Wilder people, all the casual public, and everybody that's in between. This is a fight which is going to be he gets zero credit for. This is a high-risk fight for the simple fact that this dude is a former PED user. Busted twice. His name was cleared for the, the second time, the first time. It wasn't versus Latif Coyote. And we get to his comments as well. All right. Also, it's a lose-lose situation for him. Because if he beats De Luis Ortiz, oh, Luis Ortiz is old. Um, you know, he he you know he didn't have his pads in him. Oh, Deontay Wilder don't get no credit. I told you guys, Deontay Wilder is the most hated athlete that I've ever seen in my lifetime. Hated. Like, pure hate. Like, people hate LeBron, or some people hated Jordan. You know, some people hate Floyd, Tom Brady, but at the end of the day, you respected them. Deontay Wilder is hated where don't nobody respect him. You know, and that is what it is. But you're looking at it, it's a fantastic matchup. It's going on at the Barclays Center on March 3rd, which is next week. And another thing about this fight, it was supposed to go down November 4th last year, I believe. You know, obviously Ortiz was busted for uh, Pez. He didn't, you know, he would say he had said he had high blood pressure or something like that, which I don't believe. And he didn't put the prescription in, you know. How don't you put a prescription in? They give you the Vada slip that tells you what are you taking. So you just was too lazy to fill it in and too lazy to have your advisors fill it in. I don't believe it. But if Deontay Wilder loses, he was a bum. He was this, he was that, he was never that good. And at the end of the day, Eddie Hearn actually wins. Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua. They're doing the same thing Keith Thurman is doing. Keith Thurman says to Errol Spence, if you're the truth, you're going to be there when I'm ready. That's what Eddie Hearn is doing. They're banking on somebody to beat Deontay Wilder so they don't have to face him. And at the end of the day, when you get all the support and everybody legitimately hates Deontay Wilder and don't respect him, and, and you can you can duck without having any pressure on you and make fights with Miller or make fight with a Parker, make fight with the winner David Price or Alexander Povetkin, it doesn't matter. People got mad at uh, at Deontay Wilder because Alexander Povetkin got popped again for performance enhancing drugs. Well, popped for the first time. And Wilder flew over there. And people got mad at Wilder. And turned it back. Say, it's always some Wilder. Yada dee, yada da. But, hey, that's just the world we living in. So, um, that was like the uh, <laughs> an introduction paragraph to this fight. Um, also on this fight card is uh, Hugo Centennial Jr. Jamel Charlo for the interim title belt. And if Canelo beats Triple G, that full WBC title goes to the winner of that fight. Just to let you guys know. Because Canelo is not elected to fight for the WBC title. And also you have Ukazi and, and Andre Durrell in the rematch where his uncle jumped in the ring and punched him last year. You also have a HBO rival card with Kovalev versus who knows, somebody, nobody. But you also have Bivol, Demetrius Bivol, young, um, you know, young gun in the sport taking on Sullivan Pereira. Who's a rising, rising uh, Cuban star as well, like Luis Ortiz. So I'm do those predictions. Some of those predictions Monday. So we are gonna have some predictions on Monday. Let y'all guys know. And I believe you have a fight across the pond that week that day as well. I'm not sure, but you know, talk about their strengths. And obviously, Luis Ortiz, he's fundamentally strong. It's fundamentally uh, strong. You know, he's got good fundamentals. He throws uh, his punches good. He has a good understanding of of, of the game of boxing. And that's nothing. Un that's nothing not normal for the, for the Cuban for a Cuban fighter. He understands what he wants to do. He understands his strengths. He understands his weaknesses. He understands what he needs to do. His jab is solid. He doubles it up. He can single it up, and then he wants to come over the top with a big left hand. He is a southpaw, and that is an advantage in this fight. And I'll let you know why in a second. But he likes to come over the top with the with the left. He has. He's probably the best body punching heavyweight I've seen um, in a long time. You know, he'd throw a jab to the body. He'd throw a straight left to the body. Right hook to the body is good. You know, he throw right hook to the head, but his right hand ain't nothing you really worried about other than the right hook to the body for real. 
the overhand left he likes to throw versus tallest fight, fighters or fighters about his, ha his stature. They like to use distance. That's what he likes to do. He likes to come over the side. He don't even hook the left left hand a lot. He can do uppercuts on the inside versus a, a shorter guy or a guy with equal height like uh, that fights, you know, in the inside like Brian Jennings. Yeah. But ultimately, it's the double jab, single jab, triple jab. But Phaeton, he's really good at Phaeton and bringing the left hand. And we know Arthur Spilko gave Deontay Wilder uh, a tough fight because he fainted a lot. He was irky jerky. He fainted, he fainted, he fainted, he fainted. And even though he wasn't winning a lot of those rounds, but he had a plan for Ronnie Shield. And they went on the inside and they had some success tagging Wilder. He just didn't have a enough power. And when you're fighting Wilder, it's not about you have the power. You have to get the leverage. And when you're punching up and he's leaning back, using the ropes, when he's leaning back and you can't reach him, his height is one of his best attributes to jump into uh, Deontay Wilder's strength. But also, Luis Ortiz, he just he just has great understanding of of you know you know what he wants to do. He's smart. His feints are, are are good. He feints. He don't faint too much like Spilka. So I don't f expect him to be irky jerky faint faint. He faints with a meaning to get you out of position. And once he gets you out of position, he'll faint and see how you react. And if you ain't ready to go, he gonna go or he gonna faint you again and do the same thing and do it again. You talking about Deontay Wilder strengths? I mean, obviously, he's probably the elite athlete in the heavyweight division. He's the fastest. He's the quickest I've seen. That's on this uh, prize fighting level, elite level. He got fast hands. He got good feet, even though he's sloppy with his feet, which we'll get into in a minute. He got a good jab. A lot of people underrate his jab. His jab is good. And when you're that tall and you're able to, you know, make it to this level with the lack of fundamentals that Deontay Wilder does have because he didn't have a, a big amateur background, even though he won a bronze medal, your jab is very key. And his jab is good. Then he can lead. He can throw the lead hook. He can check hook a little bit. And I think, you know, that's going to be an issue for Luis Ortiz, which I explain going forward. But the jab is good, you know, and uh, the right hand is good. But when he throws the right hand, it's a gift and a curse. He can get out of position. But the thing about when Wilder gets out of position is people don't capitalize on it because he throws so wild, he puts you out of position. So he smothers you with his, with his wildness. But going into the weakness, Deontay Wilder is just sloppy. He's starting to clean that up. You see with experience, he's starting to become more balanced. The Jerry Washington fight, I really don't put no stock into that for real. He was coming off an injury. I mean, Jerry did good, but he was just coming off an injury. You know, I think it was a hand and an arm. So, I mean, he had never been that inactive in his pro in his pro career. I mean, he was fighting like four or five times a year, six times a year. So, but yeah, he's sloppy, man. His footwork, man, if he had good footwork and good fundamentals, I mean, you know, if he was a fundamental textbook boxer like Ortiz with, with his fundamentals, he'd be dangerous. But, yeah, basically his fundamentals, I mean, he gets out of position. He lunges. He squares up. But he's able to get away with it because he got height. He smothers you. And you got to worry about that power comeback. So, so people don't, like fighters don't want to stand in the lion's mouth and take that chance of getting clipped by Deontay Wilder. Ortiz, he's really a one-handed fighter. I know he got an okay right hand, but it's nothing that you want to respect. He throw the right hook, but the right hook, it's not as powerful as that straight left that he likes to vary over the top, you know, into the body. He's like a Donna Stevenson with it a little bit, but he has better overall skill and he has a better right hand than I thought Donna Stevenson could never dream of. But it's still not his strength. And, you know, with Ortiz, he's not fast. He's crafty, but he's not fast. He's not explosive, probably like when he once was. And the age is a factor as well. And knowing if the PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, that he been popped for it twice, was it a huge factor was well, it a huge factor? And we'll see. And this is is, is a defined a, a legacy to find a fight for Luis Ortiz. Because if he loses and get blew out quick, oh, it was the Peds. And then he goes away. Boom, he gone. But basically, that's it with Ortiz. He's not the fastest. He's not quick. You know, but he's strong. He can punch. He got punching power. I got to mention that. But he's not an elite, elite puncher like Deontay Water or Anthony Joshua or Vladimir Klitschko or Vitaly Klitschko. He's not an elite puncher. I think he's a, just above a grade of a Jarrell Miller. But how should you know what's the game plan? The game plan for Luis Ortiz is this. Do what you do. Faint. But when Ortiz goes inside, he takes chances. He get clipped. If you can able to time Ortiz and punch with Ortiz, you can clip him. And can Ortiz take it on the chin? He hasn't been in with a lot of big punchers. Practically zero in his boxing career. 
And what he needs to do is get his foot on the outside of Deontay Waters' lead foot and let that left hand go and try to come over the top. But beware. If Wilder's able to come on top of your left hook or your, your wild left hand, you get knocked out. But that's what he needs to do, faint. And body work. I, I like the body work, but I would be cautious of body work early. I wait till I get Deontay Wilder's rhythm, and that's another thing that throws people off of Wilder. You can't get his rhythm because he's awkward. But I wouldn't go away from the body work. I mean, Wilder's going to be expecting it. But when you go to the body, you leave your head open, and a lot of people don't like to exchange body for head shots. And I think it's probably best that Ortiz just kind of keep it to a minimum and try to close distance and faint and get Wilder out of position to capitalize. He's going to take a risk in this fight. He's going to have to punch with Wilder when he gets in that position. he got to take the risk. You know what Deontay Wilder needs to do? It needs to be Wilder. Box, walk Ortiz into something. Use your jab. Whoever got the better jab in this fight or the more effective jab, when it's time to put the other one lights out, that's who's going to win the fight, in my opinion. They're going to be able to get their offense off. But Wilder has more room for error, obviously, because of his height, his length. And I think he's too fast for Ortiz, and I think I think he's going to be able to hit Ortiz with the right hand. And Ortiz, he don't like counterpunching taller guys. I've seen with Tony Thompson. He like to get you on the back end, way on the back end. You hit him, he put the earmuffs on. I think Wilder needs to push Ortiz back. And Ortiz is not as functional or functions as well going backwards than he does forward. And I think that's important. Wilder's jab, put the right hand behind it. And I think it's very, very key that he put that lead right hook. Ortiz is open for a lead right hook. Trust me. Trust me. His hands be low. He's getting older. Can't get your hands back home as well. And I like Deontay Wilder in this fight. I like Wilder by a six-round knockout. It's to be said that Luis Ortiz has never scored a a knockout past the eighth round. But I think Wilder is too fast, too strong, too, too athletic. And I think Ortiz is not going to be willing to take the chances that he needs to take because I haven't seen him take it on, take it on film versus even smaller punchers. So I was kind of leaning towards Ortiz, but I'm going to take Deontay, the bronze bomber, Wilder. I think that's a seventh-round knockout. And I think it might be throwing the tile style, but I'll just say seventh-round knockout, clean. Y'all know what it is. We gone.